Unless you've been living under a rock, or you are what one might describe as hemispherically challenged, meaning that Bing Crosby's dream of a white Christmas is forever denied to you because the summer sun hangs hot on the horizons, you vainly attempt to celebrate Christmas Eve, i.e. you are a southern hemispherite, and a strange set of historical circumstances led to that, you probably know that we who dwell in the north have just, it seems at least now, passed one of the worst heat waves on record, uh, certainly in decades. And before I go into the main thrust of the video, which is the political, or the non-political in this case, I want to talk a little bit about what happened in Europe, Asia, and elsewhere. There were simply unprecedented temperatures recorded. For example, in the Iberian Peninsula, I believe in some spots the temperature went up to 48 degrees Celsius. Record temperatures were recorded in Glasgow, Scotland. I believe it hit 33 or 34, which has never happened, and all the time temperature has been recorded. Uh, likewise, in places such as Qatar, during the night time, the dead of night, when things are supposed to cool off significantly, they had recorded temperatures of 42 or 43 degrees. And there were some spots in sub-Saharan Africa, just below the equator, where temperatures in excess of 50 degrees were recorded. On top of that, there were devastating forest fires in Scandinavia, specifically in Sweden. And the destruction was so great and wide scale that Sweden had to recruit firefighters from other countries. Uh, Poland and Italy come to mind, I believe some others. And in general, it was an absolutely intolerable set of a few weeks, uh, perhaps even a few months, depending on where you were. In Germany, for the first time I could notice in eons, air conditioning units were sold out. And as a rule, things were just absolutely awful. I personally suffer greatly. I do not deal well with the heat. But in addition to that, if you look at places like Asia, specifically Japan, they have recorded record temperatures as well, well in excess of 40 degrees. And there were several dozen deaths, I believe mostly elderly people, uh, due to heat exhaustion and heat-related causes. The Japanese government at the time declared it to be a natural disaster of sorts, at least. And it seems at this stage that it's, it's somewhat undeniable that something is afoot with climate change, and there is a gradual increase in the temperature. Now, I'm not a climatologist or climate scientist, but I do want to recommend one channel before I proceed forward with the main issue at hand, that is politics or the non-politics of the matter. And that is a guy by the name of Paul Beckwith. It's his own channel. It's about 11K subs. He's a climatologist based in Canada, and he has a plethora of videos covering a wide range of subjects, all obviously revolving around climate change and meteorological phenomena. However, he covers things such as the effects of heat and humidity on human and mammalian physiology, uh, plastic in the ocean, uh, general climate change, and a host of other things all related to that. So I would recommend him, and I'm going to put his link in the low bar. Paul Beckwith is his name. Having said all that, I do want to get to the main thrust of my video, which is we're now at a stage now where the gradual heating up of the earth ball and climate change in general seem to all but those, I'm not really sure, who have a religious conviction to the contrary, to be undeniable. And yet, particularly in the United States, but also in pockets outside, although it is in the majority an American issue, the issue of climate change has become extremely politicized. And when I mean extremely politicized, I mean specifically it has been shot through by partisan politics. And it's effectively become a wedge issue of left versus right, in this context meaning that the left believes that climate change is real and that something needs to be done about it, and that it is largely anthropogenic, meaning it is caused by man or has at the very least a large contribution made by man, human beings. And the right probably would say, even if it acknowledges climate change, again, this is specific to the United States, although there are pockets of it elsewhere, that there might be climate change, but it's not anthropogenic, and we don't have anything to do with it, and there's nothing we can do about it, and we just have to deal with it. Two outright climate change deniers. 
Hey, bro, man, you brought that liberal lie, bro. It's all bullshit, man. There's nothing happening with the Earth. And it's a real shame, because I think climate change, and there's another issue I'll bring up later in this video, is an issue that has actually very little to do with politics. That is polarized politics, the politics of left versus right or right versus left. When you have an abundance of evidence for something that is clearly affecting the world, I mean, forest fire, mass forest fires in Scandinavia, dozens dead in Japan, record temperatures recorded, temperatures of 48 degrees recorded in Iberia, and in places such as Sub-Saharan Africa, temperatures in excess of 50 degrees Celsius. There clearly is an issue. And if you check out some of those videos, the climatologist Paul Beckwith goes into some detail on the limits of mammalian and human physiology in tolerating high humidity and high temperature uh, at the same time. And it's really unfortunate this became an issue. Now I want to backtrack a little bit historically, and I want to look at how this became a wedge issue. Climate change became a prominent issue, at least in the public conscience, I believe in the late 90s, looking back on it. And then, right off the Clinton presidency, Al Gore, the former vice president of the United States, made the horrific mistake of promoting this film an inconvenient truth. Now, the film had flaws. For one thing, it was hyperbolic in its predictions. It claimed that something like a third of Florida would be underwater by now. That hasn't come to pass. But the general thrust of it, that there is a phenomenon in the world afoot that is related to climate change and increased temperature, is largely true. But there were two mistakes committed. One, the hyperbolic uh, expression of these events. But also, Al Gore was not a very popular guy. And it seemed at the time very much that he was promoting a, an issue from a left-wing side of things not a neutral or objective perspective, but here's what we need to do on the left. And let's face it, for better or worse, the Clintons have always been aligned with the left, and Al Gore was no exception. And I think he, almost single-handedly, although not entirely, tainted the issue and turned it into a polarized political issue when it shouldn't be at all, human beings being what they are, there rose tons of voices in clamor and in counter signaling saying that it, was, it wasn't real people tried to get scientists on who did not share the consensus etc cetera, etc cetera. and so in the united states at least there was born this politically polarized issue of climate change which should never have been such now i want to talk about why it shouldn't be a political issue but I want to talk about, before that, an analog, a political analog you can find conveniently, only with the roles reversed. When we talk about clean energy, the right is far more fond of speaking of nuclear power, nuclear energy than the left. To the left, nuclear energy is not clean energy. It is, I don't know, the uh, symbolic god of decay and destruction as it were. And I'm not a nuclear scientist or a scientist of any sort, and I'm not really not a physicist, but I have looked into it myself, and I've consulted people who are in the know, who actually study these subjects or are involved professionally to varying degrees in these subjects. And my understanding is that nuclear energy is, in the current state of technology, the cleanest, most efficient source of energy we have access to. Now, the left, of course, would chime in and say, well, look at all these horrible nuclear disasters, Chernobyl, uh, more recently in Japan. But I think what that is an example of is a bit of tunnel vision. It's akin to looking at a, a plane crash and then deriving, statistically at least, the conclusion that flight is fundamentally not a safe endeavor, that is, airplane flight, commercially or otherwise, because your plane might crash. The total number of nuclear power plants extant in the world compared to the number of accidents that occur, well, the number of accidents is vanishingly small compared to the total number of nuclear power plants, as an example. But again, this became a wedge issue. 
And if we go back somewhat in history, we can see where this arose. At least this would be my analysis. This is a much longer standing issue as a wedge issue in politics being polarized, nuclear energy versus quote unquote clean energy or non-nuclear energy. And it has its origins in the Cold War. In fact, I can recall a conversation that took place on, at the time, national Western German television, West Germany, between the prominent physicist, Manhattan Project participant, and uh, General Big Brain Nibba, uh, Edward Teller, a Hungarian-American physicist, uh, promoting or looking to promote nuclear power versus a German guy. conversation took place in German. And it's very clear that the people who thought nuclear energy w was a good idea were very strongly anti-communist, and they had visceral reactions towards the Soviet Union. Conversely, on the other end of the argument were people whose sympathies tend to lie with communism or far-left politics, and I think this was the ultimate origin of this wedge issue of nuclear power versus uh, clean, green energy, whatever. But both these examples, climate change or the example of nuclear energy, these should not be, at least in an ideal world, political issues. When you have a natural disaster, a, a very evident one, such as the one that befell New Orleans in the mid-2000s, the proper response to that is, how are we going to respond in the first place? Wh what do we do, rather? Because it's obvious that there's a problem. I think at this stage, it's obvious that there is a problem with gradual heating up of the atmosphere and gradual climate change. Not as radical as predictions that Al Gore made in his film. Uh, likewise, if we want to make use of clean energy, the best bet it appears to be is nuclear energy. I'm not politically aligned. I'm not left or right, really in a general sense, but specifically on these issues, I don't think they should be wedge issues. And even if you wanted to promote this as a political issue, there are good reasons why right-wing people or conservative people could be concerned about climate change. Some of these issues, for example, are migration and immigration. Let's say every year, for the next 20 or 30 years, there is a gradual increase in the average temperature of half a degree Celsius. That means in 20 years, 10 degrees Celsius hotter. Let's say the average temperature in location X in Europe is 25 degrees in summer. That's the average temperature. That'll shoot up to 35. But what if you happen to be hmm, in a place where the average temperature is 30 in a hotter area? Well, that's 40. Now, what do you think is going to happen to climates in areas where it's just much, much hotter? Well, you could imagine if the average temperature in some sub-Saharan area in Africa or elsewhere in Southeast Asia, perhaps, or even in Latin America, is 32, 33, 35. Well, we're really beginning to see the problem here. The gradual heating up of the Earth ball is an issue because it will push migration as areas become completely uninhabitable. If we get to the stage where parts of the tropical world have averages, particularly in the summertime, of 45 to 50 degrees with humidity in excess of 100%, you better believe people cannot exist in that situation, even if they're population-wise, black or what have you, uh, somewhat better adapted to that. This is going to push new types of migration. This would not be the first time that climate change has impacted migration. For example, historically, one of the competing theories for why there was this scourge of God uh, during the early-ish Middle Ages, that is, the, the Viking raids, you know, rape, pillage, and plunder. Well, one theory was that Scandinavia, the climate was changing, and there seems to be evidence uh, for that, which might have pushed some of these raids and the expansionism of the Vikings into Britain and continental Europe, and of course elsewhere, Russia, the Byzantine Empire, etc. So it wouldn't be the first time, it's just that the numbers this time would be far, far, far greater. Now think about uh, this as well from an engineering perspective, an architectural perspective. Buildings these days, I live in an apartment building. Now, in the wintertime, it's quite warm here. It's, it's well insulated. 
against the cold. But it has the opposite effect in summer, and most buildings, historically, have been built and engineered under the premise that you want to keep heat in, not uh, keep cold in, obviously, because winter typically was cold, and summer was, at least in Europe, uh, somewhat tolerable, or at least not as insane as it has been in recent years and decades. These are just a few issues. This will be a continual issue, in addition to the natural disasters, which seem to be on the uptick, uh, given the climate change in the world. Issues like this, just as an obvious issue, such as a, a tsunami hitting a, a location, should not be politicized. And the problem with wedge issues, and I guess the human ape in general, is that we tend to put our allegiances with people not based on evidence and general consensus and the gravity of things, but rather on the principle of blind loyalty. Now, I believe strongly in loyalty, but I don't believe in blind loyalty. For example, if a close friend of mine told me he was going to go commit mass murder and he bought a bunch of guns, I'm sorry, I'm going to report him to the police. You know, loyalty has its limits. In the case of these political affiliations, it's absolutely insane. We've reached the stage where, in particular, climate change needs to be addressed from a multilateral perspective, and the partisan politics really need to be cut past. Now, I should say, in my own experience, that in Europe, this tends to be less of a wedge issue, meaning people on the right aren't as allergic to the notion of climate change as is in the States, as for the reasons cited previously, you do get pockets of it, as I said, but it's not quite as bad. But I think we need a cooperative response if we can do anything at all. It might be that it's too late. It might be that this is just the future of the world for the time being in our lifetime. And all we can look forward to are increasingly hot summers. And even if you're hemispherically challenged and celebrate Christmas and summer, I mean, summer will come to you too. And I expect that it could be at least as devastating as it has been to those of us who dwell in the North. This is an issue that I think has reached a critical point that must shed partisan politics if we want to make any progress. I'd argue as well the notion of clean energy, but that might be worth a separate video, if any video at all. But those of us who exist in this climate are aware of it. It's just obvious that things are afoot. What we're going to see is not what Al Gore claimed, probably not at least, but gradual changes, an increased frequency of ridiculously hot summers. So, for example, this previous summer, or the summer we're living in now, the heat wave seems to have passed, largely knock on wood. Uh, that might have been a one in a thousand event. Now it's more like a one in a hundred event. It could drop down to one in ten event and thus we will experience increasingly hot summers. Most places, like Germany, Germans, for example, don't believe in air conditioning for some bizarre reason. There are all sorts of folk tales why that's the case. They didn't need to, but increasingly they might need to believe in air conditioning. Uh, and this is just one small change uh, in the chain of changes. And I think people need to wake up, whether it comes to the issue of migration, immigration, climate change will have an effect on that. Building buildings engineering, architecture, it'll have an effect. Work hours. If it's 40 degrees outside, you're going to be a lot less productive at work. Just de facto, you're just not going to do as much. You're going to be exhausted. Your sleep, I mean, anyone who slept in extremely hot temperature, and this is the same as an insomniac, my sleep was absolutely terrible these previous weeks, beyond the pale in many cases. Even if you're a decent sleeper, the heat will keep you up. I got heat rashes, etc. I mean, this is a real issue that's going to affect many, many people. People died this year. And I think we're just at the stage where we can't afford the partisan politics. I don't care whether you're left or right, but climate change in some capacity needs to be addressed. And frankly speaking, if I could make some small monetary contribution that would have an actual effect on change, I would, frankly speaking. Anyway, I don't want to ramble too much on about this. Uh, link in the low bar to Paul Beckwith, the Climatologist channel. And if I'm still alive, I will check you out at a later date. You take care. And as always, may the gods watch over you. And for those of you who have not yet experienced summer, I sincerely hope you're spared that which was not spared us. 
If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.